right. Hey guys. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Separate bedrooms. We are doing today high tea sandwiches, but Asian style, Japanese cafe style, some other flourishes around Asia. But we about to make like multiple sandwiches, like as many sandwiches as we can make before the guest comes, we about to make them. I will start here with a crab meat California roll tea sandwich with this lump crab meat I copped. That's why he doesn't use. I'm super blazed today, by the way. I was gonna say, I feel like you're really high for high tea. Super high. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. I'm having a great day. <laughs> Just really, really enjoying my day. I didn't really plan out each single recipe, so this is gonna be fun because we're actually gonna be like figuring this out as I go along. I've never made any of these dishes. I like this. I so you're just, just like, freestyling today. Freestyle, yo, freestyle. Yeah. This is freestyle, off the top of the dome type shit. Just like, what did we have in our cupboard? What was at the Japanese store? Mm -hmm. And let's make some high tea. And uh, we're gonna have Charlotte Dubuque on, uh, former Vice host. She was on Vice HBO, I believe. And then she had her show, uh, Fashion Week International. And she's one of like the funniest people I met there. So Charlotte will be in the house today. Excited for that. Yup. Is it cool when you get to meet up with Vice people? Like when you just like, I guess like ex-colleagues. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you would like, say? Like ex-colleagues? You know, working at Vice is the closest thing I've had to like a workplace. Yeah, like you an know? office to go to, people that you see. Yeah. Like there was really no need for me to go to the office, but I'd just go once or yeah. twice a week and be like, yo, what's up guys? How's the show going? Like, no, but it's fun to have a place to go. I love with, it. With like work people. Like I love, because like office drama is real. It's fun. And it's cool and like just i don't know there's like a there's a culture at every office that's very different yo i i really miss it like i loved the homies advice yeah. i had a great time like i look on it quite fondly Aww. so uh i don't think i've had a job since then like that felt like a job i had an office well you I do had a but you don't have a traditional job like your job isn't it doesn't make it's not a nine to five you're not in an office yeah you do your job you like marathon do it yeah you know yeah but um yeah i, I yeah i didn't think about it but i do i fucking i miss i miss being advice yeah. that was a lot of fun so do you miss time. new york or la more like the office were they different the, like office vibe at both? okay the, it was very very different new york was ill like getting ready for a shoot and going to the equipment room and getting all your shit and yeah. you saw all the homies and there'd also be other homies that didn't work at Vice, just being there, like working on a party, working on a story, yeah. trying to pitch a show, um, doing some whatever wacky branded shit everybody was doing back then. Mm -hmm. And so New York was like really high energy yeah. and it was a different visit every time. And like, I remember being there when one day when they were like talking about planning the Dennis Rodman trip and I'm just like, this shit's fucking crazy. That's crazy to North Korea. Yeah, just like hearing about it, I'm like, what? Yeah. And um, there was always something wild going on there. Venice, the Venice office, I spent a lot more seated time at, mm -hmm. like actually working from a desk because I was bored as fuck in LA. Yeah, you like didn't have anything to do, I'm sure. Yeah. So you were like, fuck it, <laughs> just go hang out. Yeah, we were all kind of, it was like being in an insane asylum or like a weight loss camp there. It was because... None of us okay. fit in. We were all like New York people. Mm -hmm. And we're like, wow, this is a big empty office. Yeah, you're like New York people in in Venice, like right off of Abbott Kinney. Yeah. Like and it was going a... to get glasses at Warby Parker on your lunch break or something to like keep yourself occupied. Yeah, it was an office built for like 500 people. And when I got there, there was like five of us, like me, this dude, Brendan Fitzgerald. Wait, really? Yeah. There was that few people. Really few people Damn. early on. And... um but they did, the, the Erewhon got built next to it and then yeah. it got hot. It was yeah. really funny. And we didn't know what Erewhon was. We're like, dude, what's this expensive store opening up by the office? Uh -huh. And we would just like go explore the hot bar and I would like eat the shit in the aisle and leave the box. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cause I was like, this shit's too expensive, man. <laughs> but now Erewhon is like the biggest fucking thing. Yeah. And I remember when it was just like the weirdo grocery store by our office. Damn. But yeah. Advice, man.
last time I had a job at a desk. Uh-huh. I miss I miss like office comedy. Totally. There was always dumb shit. I always had fun, like working in an office. Yeah. Always. I mean, like I graffitied the office and then they wanted me to pay for it and I didn't want to pay for it. And I was they we needed to do vice upfronts. And I was like, all right, instead of paying for this, how about I fight the office manager at a boxing match at our upfronts to sell ads? Uh -huh. And if I lose, I'll pay to repaint over the graffiti. If you lose, then like we keep the graffiti or you pay for it. Yeah. And Shane was dope. Shane was always into shit like that. And they're like, did you that's lose? a good idea. Or did no, you win? I won. Okay. I knocked them down twice in the first round. Did they repaint it or did they leave it? They repainted it. Okay. It's all white. Because okay. the shit said Rice Land, Spice Land. I, I, ta <laughs> I tagged fucking Mr. Chow, Nobu all over the place. Yeah. Just like I just tagged famous Asian chef names. I like that. Like fucking Yan Can Cook. It was wild. So I put some QP mayonnaise in here. All right, and then I like black pepper on my crab salad. It's a little mm. black pepper like that. Oh, I got this Hawaiian sea salt today. Oh, these Ooh. grains are like a little too big though. That's like too big, the grains. We use the pink Himalayan. Mm. Mm. Pink salt, delish. Pink salt, babe. Yup, and then the furikake. All right, wasabi flavored furikake. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna do that. That's nice. What news we got? We have a lot of news. Yep. There's a lot of shit happening. I mean, we're entering an election year, so like the gift that will not stop giving will be, there will always be something to talk about. Yes. Um, <laughs> so there's a Republican candidate. His name is Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, he kind of came out of nowhere, interestingly enough, getting like a lot of heat on him and he's been campaigning, of course, and on his campaign trail, he's been very Kendall Roy-esque performing renditions <laughs> of Lose Yourself by Eminem <laughs> in different states. And it's just, it's just odd for him to be doing this. So Eminem had his legal team, which... <laughs> Yeah, this knows. is this is my favorite part I was going to say, story. which Eddie knows very well. It was like his. This is the godfather of our child. Yep, is on Eminem's legal team and sent Vivek a cease and desist and was like, "Please stop performing. Lose yourself. Like I don't want to be associated with your message at all. We have nothing to do with each other, and this is fucking weird." Um, we had not just spoke. <laughs> yeah. So Vivek Ramaswamy, kind of. Like, I don't know if he's kind of getting into a little bit of beef with Eminem, but he did say that um, Eminem used to be a guy who actually stood up to the establishment and said things the establishment didn't want him to say. Wow. He said, I think the fact that my political viewpoints differ from his has have made him change, that Eminem has changed over the years. That, like, if this was 20 years ago, he would have respected the fact that his political viewpoints were different and let him rock. Damn. But I'm like, this guy's- Vivek is trying to say Eminem- Is a little like He's washed and sold out. Interesting. Washed and sold out. But also- hey, Vivek? Vivek's politics are like, he, he thinks that we should abolish the FBI and CIA. He thinks that 9-11 is like a hoax. Vivek is wild. He's kind of a little Vivek bit of like- Vivek is super wild. He's kind of a little bit of like a Trump parrot. And he also, at the Republican debate... He doesn't believe in climate change. Doesn't believe in climate change. He said change. climate change policy has killed more people than climate change will, I believe was the quote. Yeah, something like that. He also said... Um, but he said a lot of weird shit, man. He said some wild shit. Oh, at the Republican debate, he, he kind of direct quoted Obama. Like, not quoted him, but he took something Obama had said at his first Democratic debate... And he was like, oh, I'm just like a skinny guy with a weird last name that no one's ever heard of. That so you think his path is, because this is the fun part. Do you think he's positioning himself as Republican Obama? I do, because he kind of parrots things that Obama has said in the past. Um, and he really tries to be this like, I'm young and politicians should be young and we should be creating change and you can trust me mm. and all of these things. Where He wants that Republican youth vote. 
I think he's a little bit too naive. Still. Yeah. And like, there is something to be said about ha having more young people in politics. I do think that that's a positive, but I think in his case, particularly, I don't think that he has the experience. And I think he's just a little bit naive and doesn't really understand foreign policy and doesn't, and, and he doesn't believe in climate change and. Yeah, he seems he's like an excited, seen... successful guy, like very successful yeah, right now for, for sure. being a, a late 30s guy. And it's like, you know, and you see it with a lot of these tech dudes. They just feel like I can take over the world. Like Elon Musk, yeah. you know, like I think when you have that much bread and you're successful that young, a lot of there's not many people around telling you like, yo, maybe there's another side. Yeah. Or like maybe you're not ready for this mm -hmm. or just to humble them a little bit. I think it's like maybe a stop lot performing. Of, lose yourself. That's great. Like he's straight like Kendall Roy. He's yeah. up there. Performing Lose Yourself by Eminem. Wow. Shouts to Raph. Shouts to Rafael Martinez ESQ for putting the kibosh on that, you know? <laughs> he's yeah. not only Eminem's attorney, he's our attorney. He's, he's Idris's attorney, attorney, you know? <laughs> Rafael Martinez, baby. He's the best. Yup. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's just going to get more interesting this year. There's, like, not great candidates. But we'll see. I'm bringing... The salad down to temp. It's delicious right now. Oh. Very, very delicious. I'm bringing it down in temp. And then we will serve. So do not let me get too high to the point where I forget that there is a delicious California brew, brew crab salad. Brew, oh my God, I'm, I'm fucking flopping out. <laughs> There's a California blue crab salad in the refrigerator. This is the funny thing when people was like, yo, you put on an accent or whatever. Like my accent, bro, I fob out all the time. Wait, like all what? the time I just fob out. I've never heard you like fob out. Like I've never my heard L's you have like- My L's become R's, my R's become L's. Is that a real thing though? I really need yeah, to, we need to get out. into this because there's a rumor. Don't you fob out sometimes, Ju Julius? See, I'd be like, I would just almost Drury, uh, Ju Julius. I don't know why I fob out sometimes. Sometimes I Boston out. See? Yeah. Yeah. Get it. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oz become Oz. Yeah. You know, you you have trouble with L's. I have trouble with R's. Yeah. <laughs> Fobbing out. Sorry, you were going to say something. I was just going to ask, is it true? Because there's like a rumor, and I've never had anyone to ask or address it with. I could have just Googled it, I guess, that the guy who started Lululemon started it because he was like mad at an Asian man. That's what I heard. And he was like, I'm going to make it so he can't pronounce it, and he's just going to call it. Ruru Lemon. Yeah. I don't know if it's true, but I heard about him. I, I I was like, is that one of those rumors you hear that like It's is... like the Ciara rumor? Yeah, like Ciara has a dick. Ugh. I You never heard of that? There's two universal rumors that every child who has gone to middle school in America hears. Probably like it probably if you were in middle school around the 2005-2008 era. Marilyn Manson got a rib removed to suck his own yeah. dick. And Sierra has a dick. Was a transvestite. That's had, the urban mythology. Not proven, not true. We are not, it's like, we're not supporting not it. Obviously not true. We've seen evidence that she has had children. She has had babies. There, She doesn't have a penis. The only contradictory evidence is that Russell Wilson seems to be the kind of dude that would have appreciated a mini dick, you know? She could have a huge clit. She probably has a huge mini dick in Maybe there. Maybe that's for Russell where. Wilson. The wires got disconnected. Team Future. Team Future. Your Team Future. I'm, I'm always Team, team Russell future. Wilson. What? Sure. Yeah. Oh, future. I mean, now that I'm about to have a child, I just appreciate a man who steps up. I appreciate a man who loves his kids. I would have been Team Future before I was pregnant, and now it's less like it's less it's less codeine and strippers for me, and a little <laughs> bit more wholesome. Farmers Russell Wilson and Ciara's mini dick. Yeah. You know? I like what they have going. I feel like they live in like a farmhouse style. Like they have like a really wholesome life. Like future just has like lines of coke around. Mm -hmm. And that's just not. It's not your, love, it's not I your I Viverino right future, now. But I'm, I'm just, I'm with child. So I have to take my girl's side. But yeah. Um, Team future for life. <laughs> You say that, but I really feel like you're more of a Russell Wilson. Oh, wow. Like, as a man, wow. as a man, you are. This is the most offensive thing anybody's ever said to me. You, like, take care of your family, and you're, like, a I good do. person. You I have do. a good heart. I do. You're not, like, leaving me here by myself, like, doing, like, codeine at a strip club every night. No. 
No. So I think you're more Russell Wilson than you are future. I'm more Russell Wilson. Yeah. More Russell Wilson. But I don't like Russell Wilson. Why? He's just, I don't know. Okay, is there any other, like, good fathers in the world? I don't have any other examples to give you right now. Like, I just find Russell Wilson corny for some reason. Okay, on the topic of fatherhood exclusively. Yeah. You are more. Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Word. I think that's a huge compliment. That's a good compliment. I'll if you were it. to tell me... Damn, I'm so high. This shit not even ready yet. Like, I don't even know. If you were to tell me that I was, like, giving you... Ginger from Casino vibes. No, I would be I would be highly complimented. If See? You were... See, <laughs> that's it. what Future is. Future is the male Ginger from Casino. <laughs> no. Yeah. But as a, but if you were like as a mom, you're like ginger from casino. You're like right? strung out at like a motel, okay, okay, okay. giving my best. So I see head. what you're saying now. You see what I'm saying? Whatever. You I see. think it's a compliment. You see. I think it's a compliment. Speaking of like fake shit, we weren't talking about fake shit, but the blind side is a is is fake. Yo, this was the saddest fucking news ever. They fucking I mean, blindsided the main character of Blindside. Okay, so like we according, thought these white people had taken care of this man. According to Michael O'Hare, and then Britney Spears did. He's suing the family, stating they never actually adopted him, and that he was duped into signing paperwork that put him into a conservatorship with them for like fifteen plus years. Yeah. Um, and people are mad at Sandra Bullock. I don't know why. This is none of her business. She just did her job. She and played she did a her scammer job. mom. She did her job very well. She won an Oscar. I think people were like on the internet calling for her to give back her Oscar, which is absolutely ridiculous. Were you a Blindside fan? I mean, I saw it like one time yeah. and... Oh, our guest is here. Our guest is here. Our guest is here. Charlotte is here. I'm way behind. But okay. this is going to be great because Charlotte can sit with you as Amazing. I cook and do this. Amazing. This is better. Now I'm, I'm going to go rushed. get Charlotte. Let me get Charlotte. Um, I think just tell your thoughts yo, on the blind side. I'm let yo in the movie too. I think they like had scenes where they were like teaching him very basic human things to do, and trying to like make it seem like they taught him how to be a human. Hey, Papa. And they made all the money on the blind side themselves, but <laughs> they made like three hundred million dollars. Yeah, they owe that man some money. But so this here, this is the fish cake high tea sandwich all right i got some japanese fish cake from the market fried it to life so boom that's gonna go in a sandwich too now the star of the show here the tonkatsu i'm gonna whip this up as we welcome charlotte What's up, Charlotte? Thank you so much. Please watch out. Our dog was just out here and like had an accident. I don't want you to step in that. Yeah, come on in. Hey, Mr. Chow. Mr. No. Chow. Relax. Good to see you. It's been forever. Been How have you been? I'm good. I'm Married in LA. Sick. You'll sit with Natasha. I cook, and then we'll eat the sandwiches and tea. We'll yes. Yeah. I'm. This is the house husband show. Oh, I'm due like any time now. But I was like, once the baby gets here. I'm just gonna be Not like useless. Yeah, I was but like. Now you feel kind of good, or you're exhausted. I had my stride of feeling yeah. really good, and then now you're over it. Like the last week, yeah. I'm like, okay, like yeah. I could literally go. Like now, I'm like, I want to go into labor. I'm not uh, yeah, scared I'm anymore. Like done. I'm like, let's do it. We like. Oh. I feel like that's what's about to happen. My mom gets here <laughs> on like Saturday or Sunday from from Boston, and I just feel like when she's here, everyone's gonna be like. Mm. Did you water break today? Mm. Are you in labor? Yeah. Are you having the baby? Yeah. And you're like, buy tickets. Yeah. I have so many questions. I haven't seen this man for a long time. Oh, this yeah. is going to be fun. Like, fire off. Yeah, I haven't seen you since, like, I feel like a vice upfront or something yeah, like something that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Because, like, when did you... And just to introduce Charlotte, Charlotte was one of my favorite hosts of Vice, one of the nicest, best people I met, and she started the show... Fashion Week International. And then did you do also Vice on HBO? I feel like yeah. you did an episode or two. Yeah. 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 I think like, I, I also wanted to say, I wanted to wait till we were going to say like, Eddie might be my favorite Vice ho ex-Vice host. Thank no, you. no, no, no. Because Vice made some good decisions uh -huh. earlier and then they just had a taste bypass. Yeah. yeah. I think they used to, I think 
I mean, there's it was a totally of... different thing, like pre-Vice yeah. Land and post-Vice Land. It's like, yeah. you know, exactly. BC, was AD. It growing it's so like... fast that it was like kind of hard to control that level of taste that it was before. I think they wanted to grow it very fast. Yeah. And so they hired some people with no taste. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not going to mince my yeah. words. No, definitely. No, I mean, I agree yeah. with you. So they were like, whereas you used to have to be like charismatic mm -hmm. or in some way born to be on TV, yeah. that no longer is relevant to them. Oh, the bar was just and so I, low. And I suppose that the people that they put on camera now have other qualities. I don't see them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being really mean. No. no. But like, it's I really missed that like, there's just no vibes. Yeah. Yeah. It's dead. It feels like it kind of, like, cause there was so many powerhouse shows at one point. Yeah, and just exactly. even like we were talking about how the magazine doesn't exist anymore. And like Isn't that feels crazy? like the backbone Isn't of it. Crazy? Yeah. Like that's how we all found out about it. Yeah. yeah. So it feels like without the heart of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pieces get lost. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I did Fashion Week. That's how I like, that's how I got the job. Yeah. I was like okay. a loser <laughs> DJ. Very embarrassing. But you know what was cool no. about Vice too, and what it's cool to just sit here and like talk to you and like get back into that zone oh. because it was like we all had our favorite shows and favorite hosts. Yeah. And it was yeah. like you popped onto the scene in like London and yeah. you would pop up on London Vice and we'd be in New York like, oh shit, who's she? Like that's a cool segment. Yeah. And then we would trade crews and it was really fun because you'd see people like I met people in like Mongolia that mm -hmm. were working at Vice, the China mm -hmm, office, like mm -hmm. every office yeah. had like different hosts and a different vibe. Yeah. And it really felt like a skate shop that you liked mm -hmm. yeah. and you signed up to work there and then started working on shows. Like that was the early totally. vibe. Totally. Yeah. Like no one else wanted to be there. Yeah, I know. And I didn't even realize till I moved because I worked in the in the London office for about so five years and then the New York office for about five years. Okay. And like it wasn't until I moved to, and when you worked in the London office, it was like, if you got kind of anointed and like requested to come work in New York mm. and you graduated, it then it was like, oh, you've like you did beamed it. me up. Yeah. I was like, wow, I've, I must be really special. Got there and then everyone's like, oh, I want to work at the London office. Like that's where the magic happens. Like you're doing so all the cool shit. You're like more international. You get, you guys get to go to Africa. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing? And they were all doing. We were like checking out new <laughs> restaurants. <laughs> you guys were doing news. You guys were doing news. Well, no, but I, I think when I moved, it was when New York started doing news really seriously, and yeah. there was less room for that bread and butter, just like entertainment, wh where you learn something, which is yeah. all I know how to do. Yeah. And they suddenly started being like, "You need to be a serious news journalist," and I was like, "I'm not a serious person." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're like, okay, yeah. here we go. Because I did that that Fashion Week International. Yes. And then they wanted to redo it when they launched Viceland. Yes. And I'd I gone remember. to like 15 Fashion Weeks and I'd made these documentaries for like $2,000 and I was dead. Yeah, I was exhausted. Like burnt out. Yeah. And they were like, can you do it again? But you'll get like 40 times the money. And I was like, I. I'm so sick of this show. Like, also, I was so sick of being pigeonholed as like as fashion the fashion girl. girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I love clothes and I love style. Like, I yeah. do not want to talk about Fashion Week. That was interesting. So that was just like a role they put you in. Well, no. So I pit basically. She started there, but they pigeonholed yeah. her after. Uh, I know. And it was okay, like okay. she yeah. really did well on Vice on HBO. Yeah. Right. So I came in like. I was kind of an intern, and then one week, it was early in my internship, our old boss, Andy Kappa, called a meeting. Do you remember Kappa? Yeah. Called a meeting, and he was like, we need, we need to break into the fashion world because no one will let Vice in the fucking fashion world. Yeah. <laughs> they think we're going to take the piss out of them. We need to go to Fashion Week, and we're not allowed. And I was like, well, they're never going to let us go to Fashion Week, so we're going to have to come up with something else. Yeah. I went back to my desk. I literally thought, to my, I was like probably hungover. I was like, I wonder if there are any other fashion weeks in the world that we could go to. Google. Weirdly, that year, 2011, like every single other country in the world seemed to be having their first ever fashion week. Oh, and I was amazing. like, wait, this is interesting. Yeah, you were going to like, wasn't Anywhere. there like Bangladesh or Indonesia? Right. Like yeah. all Where's kinds the of wild place fashion that weeks. My, your parents don't want you to go to. That's where I went. Yeah. yeah, and of course they were like, yes, please come. Yeah, please come. Like this is our it first fashion week. It was beautiful. Yeah. They like rolled out the red cup, and I was like, amazing. they thought I was some like fashion journalist. I felt yeah. a bit bad about that, but anyway. No, it was amazing. It was really it's, fucking yeah. funny. And it was like a portal. It was never about fashion. It was a portal into like 
women's lives on the margins of really strange places. Right, well, not yeah. strange, but places we'd never been yeah, to see. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I should say not not say strange. That was you know? the magic of Vice early on, though, because it was just so many places and things that you had never seen yeah. or like yeah. you'd never gotten a glimpse into. A yeah. whole new world, yeah. like Aladdin. Whole world. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I did that for like ever, and then. One, I was so burnt out. I was yeah. so done. I got like a stomach ulcer just because I was shooting constantly, trying to yeah. get all these. Ep and then anyway, I quit. And then they were like, "We want to do it again. Can you do it again?" And I was like, "No." And, and you so quit because you were tired. I was exhausted, and yeah. I was like, "I need to try something else that isn't this show." Yeah. So then I cast. They wanted to do it again, so I cast Haley Gates. Yeah. Do you know who that yeah. is? Yeah, Haley. In the US version. Okay. And then I ended up doing it again. I produced, because I was, I, they, I tried to let someone else produce it and they couldn't. Yeah. They were like, this is too hard. And I was like, yeah. I feel like that's why I don't want to do it. Yeah. Because it like, was well, your show and as your, there was very few Vice, like I feel like Vice shows you can put into separate verticals. Mm -hmm. Like there were shows that were derivative of your show. Yeah. There were shows that were derivative of my show. Yeah. There were shows that were derivative of Shane and then like Hamilton. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And you, everybody knew the buckets and everybody yeah, saw because yeah, yeah. when something popped in an office, the other office would be like, who's the person here that could do that thing? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really, we were like fucking Trader Joe's. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, wait, that's wait the buffalo chicken dip's working? The everything bagel? Okay, how many things can we buffalo yeah, chicken let's dip? Let's make everything with everything. That, it just hit me. Vice was the fucking Trader Joe's of news and it was incredible. Yeah. Like I fucking, it was incredible. It just, like you said, it was, it was wild when they brought in the A and E people. I know. Like, it, it, we didn't know how good we had it, and like, I don't want. I haven't talked publicly about Vice hardly at all for like various reasons. Oh. Um, but also because I'm worried that if I do, I'm just going to talk so much shit, and I'm never going to be able to stop. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, trying to be very careful. Open the it's plug fucking in. hilarious. Like, I also because because I'm a little bit heartbroken. Yeah. Because it was so amazing. Yeah. We didn't realize how fucking amazing it was and how good we had it. Yeah. And now, that doesn't exist anywhere anymore. Isn't that crazy? And I know I probably, I probably sound like an old person being like, the good old days, but like literally, show me. Yeah. No, but that's the thing. It was such a huge piece of yeah. culture that just like doesn't yeah. exist anymore. So I don't know how to do anything. What do you, oh, what do you oh, you mean like you don't know how to do anything? Yeah, like yeah, because okay. like because you learn from Vice. Yes. Yeah. I was a oh, like, DJ. Was the, yeah. Yeah. Right, and I was a maitre d in a restaurant, and and that taught me how to be a host, I think. So I was like, because yeah. I was shy, but I was like, oh, people like my weird personality. Just being like public, just like, being like, like yeah. nice to people and like interested or whatever. And then I got this show, and Vice doesn't. It's not like TV where there's like the producer and the editor. And yeah. It's like you do everything. They right? just like throw you out there with yeah. the camera. They're like, have fun. Yeah. You're and you all learn... student filmmakers. Student... Yeah. And you learn to do it for like five dollars. Mm -hmm. And then you try and go into the real world and they're like, it's, I don't know how, what the language is, the jargon. Like, yeah. it's so weird. I'm completely institutionalized. So I want to talk about this topic. This is this is a fun one. I was like, one. this is so interesting because mm. then it's like you try to go somewhere else and you're like, wait, 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 no culture shock. And yeah, because you've met a lot of my homies at Work Advice, yeah. And so she's heard the conversation, and it's like, which homies? Come on. So no, I'm not going to. We're name not going to names, name names. Okay. But there is a big thing <laughs> where, where people because you know there were a few people in the entertainment industry that worked at Vice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For instance, like um. One that comes to mind is Evan Rosenfeld, who did oh, yeah, like yeah. 30 for 30 before coming to Vice. And if you talk to him, he'll be like, dude, it's crazy how people didn't know how to do things by industry standard mm. at Vice. And like, I didn't know any better because I started at Vice too. Yeah. But then I started to get jobs at like MTV yeah. and then, you know, ended up doing the movie. And I was like, oh my God, there is like a whole nother <laughs> professional side of this that no one is learning or teaching no. at Vice because no one knew how. No. And I think what happened was when we went, I will say this for everyone that works at Vice too, because there's a lot of people from Vice that have trouble getting jobs. Yeah, yeah. And I will say there is a real talent that people that worked at Vice in the era we worked there from say, let's say 2010 to like 2015, 16. While a lot of the people may struggle with like admin systems, chain of command, like the shit they teach you in an office. If you put that person's back against the wall with $30,000, they'll bring you a 30 minute show. 
that is the thing. It's it's like street That's fighting right. versus like trained structural yeah. fighting. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think there is something very special about all of us that work there at totally. that time. Totally, because you know what? We're like, I'm, I've learned, I mean, are they, they call us producers, right? I mean, I was a host. Mm -hmm. I guess I was a content creator. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was yeah. a host, right? But they, because they didn't want to pay us like director rates, they called us all producers. Yeah. So now I'm out in the world and I'm like, well, I produce documentaries. And someone's like, okay, well, can you do the budget for this? And I'm like, sorry, like, I yeah. can't like count. Yeah. I can't remember my own cell phone number. I have like, <laughs> yeah. I just cannot do any math. I can't figure out the tip. It's embarrassing. So it's like, I feel handicapped. It's weird. That's so interesting. But the thing is, yeah. you were so directing they... that show. You created a show. Yeah. Well, we all did. It was all uh, just our uh, like weird brains yeah. like splashed onto. But that's probably the magic of it. And sometimes yeah. I feel like when you don't have training and you don't have yeah. that in your head of oh, it has to go this way. It has yeah. to be this way. You create something like a just that can't be replicated. Exactly. You can't read. There's no recipe. Yeah. It's just like that's your shit. Yeah. No one's going to do it the same and they way. they let us do that. They literally, That's like, cool. let, it was almost like we self-commissioned. Our bosses were like, well, if you think it's cool, it must be cool, go and do it. And then that changed. I think somewhere along the line, Vice stopped trusting, like, the creative voices, and it became the corporate voices. I was going to say, did it change? It was more corporate yeah. influence I think it was, at some point? Yeah, yeah, I think it was insecure. It's like, you know how, like, you were one of the, like, early, early employees, the real, real? Yeah. And then saw, like, things change? Yeah. It's like, for Vice, oh, I, I have was... a lot of questions. Oh I'm like, where is my consignment? I also, where the fuck is mine? I like have so much shit to talk about yeah. the real real forever. So that's like my vice. I'm like, I hate you guys. So funny. But like, no, the, the thing I would say about the vice thing is that, you know, the directing thing was a big deal. They wouldn't give anybody a directing credit. And the excuse was always, if we give you a directing credit, then we got to yeah. give everybody a directing credit. And you're like, yeah. and I was like, then how are we going to really, become directors? Was it more about the money, though, do you think? Like, they didn't want to pay people the directing credit, or they just didn't want to give that role to everybody? Like, I, that was a sacred thing. I think it was a money thing, because yeah. the credit would end up becoming money. Yeah. And then one day, they figured people would probably join the DGA union. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then now, and then there's a, a rate. rate. Yeah. Because we were like off, everybody did their business there, like off the books. But the thing is, it created like this ill magic. Yeah. We went to Viceland. I was like, if they just put the internet on television, yeah. it would have worked. Yeah. But I think the insecurity of a lot of people high up at Vice was like, okay, now we got to be professional. They wanted a slice of well, yeah. the Hollywood pie. Yeah. yeah. And they wanted, and so they brought in, I don't want to say names, but like cinephiles, like people mm -hmm. who like told them they could legitimize them in yeah. a kind of movie way. Yeah. And yeah, and they, it was too seductive. Yeah. And they could, you're right, it, they should have just like beamed it onto, beamed yeah. Yeah. YouTube onto the... What was working already. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just remembered like how dope our shit was because we didn't know any better. We were genuinely making shit up as we went along, like this fucking meal today. Yeah. Wait, and, what is it? This meal? Oh, I have a ton, but I wanna, I wanna say this thing because okay. I'm so high and yeah. I'm gonna forget. <laughs> I like cannot hold a thought today. But no, the thing is, is like, you know, I, I remember when all the Vice shit with Vice Land started to happen, and I could just see it, like, oh, it doesn't have that magic anymore. Mm. Because when it was so honest and real, and just like three people in the field shooting something. What drew you to it wasn't like the professionalism or the technical aspects. It was like you felt closer to the truth. Totally. And that's yeah. what I think we all loved about totally. the shit. And I mean, I don't know what you said just directly resonates with me because I remember at some point realizing that what I used to be celebrated for at, at, by the audience and by my bosses started to become a problem. Yeah. And I used to, I was like a person, we, we're like personality hosts. Yeah. Yes, we know what we're talking about, but also like people like yeah. us, right? I don't yeah. know why, but they like us. Yeah, we're like uh, you, Ricky Gervais. There you, you go. <laughs> and then people love him. Yeah. Not, I do, anyway. Um, he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. So it became like, you need to stop, like start reeling in your personality and it becomes about the party line Yeah. and about being a reporter and just, stop editorializing and making it make it about the subject yeah and suddenly so i started bending myself out of shape to try and become this kind of news robot yeah 
But ultimately, they didn't want me anymore because they wanted to throw the baby out with the bathwater. They didn't. They wanted a whole new yeah, a whole new look. And this was like HBO yeah, I, transition. Yeah. I Vice feel Land like transition. politically, Vice was like used to be a free for all, and then just they yeah. kind of. It's almost like Evian starts selling violence. It just became a different brand yeah. to yeah. me. And that's what yeah. was my experience. It was like you know we talk about this sometimes in relationships where it's like. It, it it would have been like, you know this person for three to five years, mm -hmm. and then one day because they came into money, now the rules of the relationship are totally different. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Was like, wait, what? I thought like you liked me before. Yeah, yeah. And now you don't like me, and I got like you want me to wear fucking Allbirds shoes. Do you know? And you're like, like <laughs> that's what it would have been. It's like, babe, yeah. I came into some money. Yeah, I yeah. have tech friends now. They have bad taste. I need you to wear Vega shoes. I need you to wear Allbirds. Was it that, though, like, like when it was happening, were you I mean, aware of any, like, was there like cultural shifts, I guess, like before, was there indicators, like this is going in a bad direction, this feels like something weird might happen with this, like new money? And... Yes. When A&E yeah. &E people started to show up in the office. Mm -hmm. okay, like I haven't that's... Su like so, because A&E is like, is like 90 Day Fiance vibes yeah. and like, Little Little Women LA. Like, I mean, there there was a dude a &E in there. A&E is kind of the craziest network in terms of like what right. they're putting out for shows, and like A&E and Vice to me could not be any different. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think it was a few. It was people they brought in who had to justify their jobs. Yeah. So they started, you know, people who just create problems that aren't there just so they have a job. I'm going to set the fire so somebody has to put it out and it has to be me. In England, there's a term for it that you don't have here. It's called jobs worth. And I keep trying to like <laughs> yeah. teach it to all my friends and they're like, okay, like it jobs it's never going to work. Okay. I like, I'm going to adapt that. <laughs> I'm going to pick this up because um, there's so many people like this yeah. in LA. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I just remember we all used to be prolific and it was like we made so much content and everything we thought was good, they would let us do. And then they started picking apart all of our pitches and suddenly just they wouldn't commission anything that yeah. I would, no, they didn't want any of my ideas and I was just languishing and I was like, well, what do we, what do we do? Yeah. And it just was over. Yeah. That's so it's crazy. crazy. It was, I remember at one point they brought in a new executive and he started a huge meeting for Wong's World and goes, all right, we need to figure out what this show is. I'm like, what do you mean? It's, we've been doing it for two years. It's a fucking short, fat Chinese guy in sneakers eating food in weird places. Like, oh. it's a really simple show. <laughs> and like, if you get out of my way, you're gonna get good episodes and like, you're gonna learn something. Cause like, we just go where we're genuinely curious. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, I don't know. What do you think it is? And he had us do like a verbal mood board upstairs in the office in LA. And he started being like, you know, one word, it's like adventure. What did you oh, say? God. It's an adventure? It's an adventure show, okay? And then it's fun, right? And and at one point he was like, you don't see politics in this, right? And I was like, oh, I see what's going on. They didn't want me to talk about politics anymore. Yeah, it was like, I felt like your show was very political. Yeah, it was a Trojan horse show yeah. where I did the food so that people would come listen to politics. Like yeah. this, like, yeah. you know, like- And also I, just the barrier to entry, like people open up when they're eating. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, we're the same. We're eating food together, like the, whatever better conversation you know mm -hmm. yeah and they were like we don't want you to do politics mm -hmm. and in the end it turned out he's like guys this is like indiana jones the food show you don't need politics God. you don't need the identity stuff just keep it to food and adventure and i was like oh i see what they're doing oh, so you i had no idea about up. this yeah because they so were like separating it was like vice on hbo was news and everything else wasn't news mm -hmm. anymore and so it was like you couldn't use fashion as a rabbit hole yeah. to talk about women's lives in the margins. It was like, that was the domain of Vice on HBO. Interesting. After this meeting, I went on the Sicily episode. Yeah. And in the Sicily episode, it had already been pre-planned. Uh -huh. I was going to interview white supremacists in Sicily and tell them about true romance after eating breakfast, because like everything you eat at breakfast in Sicily is like kind of Sugar. African. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. It's okay. very African. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was like, you know, yo, you guys know like all your favorite foods is African. And they're like, what? And it turned out to be this crazy episode where we got arrested by plainclothes cops that were white supremacists and got thrown into Sicilian jail on the 4th of July 
and they shook us down and tried to take our footage, but the DPs all held it down. But our producer was like an a &E recommended guy. The last show he was on was like a big network reality show. He, as soon as we got arrested, was like, give him the footage, give him the footage, give it up. And we're like, no, bro. And it was in that moment that I realized the difference between old Vice and mm -hmm. new was that we gave a fuck about what we were doing. It meant something to us besides money or anything. Yeah, totally. We cared about what we were doing. This dude was like, bro, I'm not going to jail for this shit. And we, and were we like, just had oh, a mutiny wait, after uh, that. We are in a cult, but it's okay, right? Yeah, it's a cult we believe <laughs> You're in. You're like, it's a good yeah. one. It feels kind of yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, I also have been in jail for fashion for like, and been like, this is not worth it. But also it's fine, I'll get out. Shane didn't get us out, but yeah. somebody did. What happened? Similar, well, not similar, actually. The first one was in Venezuela. It's my fault. I We had this story about basically... Venezuela's fucked, sorry. Mm -hmm. no, it, it is for sure. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, lovely, lovely place. Um, the, there was this thing, this kind of trend going on on social media where the president would hold these rallies and he would um, give gifts to people. Like, I'll give you a house. And it was, it's just oh, okay. like the most fucked up. He's like, very Oprah yeah, of him. There like, you go, exactly. Can you get a house? But <laughs> he must have seen it on you. Oprah. Yeah. And, um, and so people would write what they wanted and like throw it on a coconut, sorry, and throw the coconut you could request at him. The gift? This is so crazy. Right. And there was this girl, this young girl on Twitter who was kind, was kind of a feminist. She was like complaining about some shit. And she was complaining on Twitter like, in this country, if you're a woman, nobody cares about you unless you're hot. And you need to have plastic surgery to get a job. Mm -hmm. And I can't afford plastic surgery, so can you, Mr. President, please, can you buy me a pair of tits? Oh. <laughs> and we were like, this woman is amazing. Yeah. Must it be interviewed. Like, this is... It was part of the fashion yeah. That's thing. a vice interview. Yeah. So we hit her up and we were like, so what are you gonna do? Are you gonna throw a coconut at him? I mean, or two. A terrible journalism, buy my like tits? suggesting, just gentle suggestion. She's like, that's a great idea. And I'm like, oh. Yes. <laughs> I don't suppose <laughs> you're gonna do it this week. I, you know, I'm really joking. I'm feeding the trolls. Um, anyway, so this girl wanted to write, please, Mr. President, give me a pair of tits on the coconut and throw it at him at a rally. But there was no rally. So she was like, I'm just going to throw it over the presidential gates. Aww. So we went and filmed her. She threw this coconut at the presidential palace and all fucking, I think it was nine of us, me and the crew and her just got arrested and put in. They were like, today yeah. wasn't a yeah. day and where it, you could it, throw a coconut. Uh, so and no coconuts. No coconut day. Mother's day. Oh so, my god! Like <laughs> it, I mean, she was like, "I want some, some mommy cool. milkers." Anyway, you know, yeah. she was like, "I want some coconuts." <laughs> we missed our flight. There were grown oh, no. men, grown men on my team crying. I won't name any names. And then, but then we got out. It was fine. But I mean, that is a different level of. It's a great story. Intensity you when you're getting arrested <laughs> in a different country. I know. Yeah. I don't think I, it's just something you don't think about until it's happening. You're like, oh, getting arrested in your home country. It's, you kind of just right. know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're in Venezuela, you're like, what's going to happen to me? I was like, is this going to end really badly? Yeah, exactly. like what yeah. happens? Yeah, international in jail jails. is interesting. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's so interesting and it's so different. And you're like completely at the mercy of people that you don't understand. Yeah, it was culture. not chill. It turned out fine, oh, yeah. and then they fed us like Gatorade and cake for like twenty four hours. Did we Yo, ever that's the follow funny up? Shit. <laughs> did, we, did she ever get her coconuts? I don't. Like I would mm. love to know I if need she to ever found up. a way to I get to, her boob job. And if I'll not, I'll find out and I'll let you know. I was. This like, is what a long time ago. Yeah. And then the second time we were detained was in the DRC in Kinshasa. Oh wow. For no no reason really. Yeah. They just were just like kind of like. Oh, I, there was a crazy reason, actually. It was like for like a reality show. I need to, it's, it's an insane story. They detained the wrong, I don't know. I'm, it's bad. We were I always in trouble. Like, I, was, I got yeah. tear gassed in Istanbul. I got arrested in Sicily. Yeah. Like, I ran away from Yakuza in Tokyo because yeah. I accidentally set off the fire alarm in this like den. It was crazy. The thing that I always liked about <laughs> Vice though was it felt like just as a viewer, as opposed to other shows, it felt like when stuff like that would happen, you guys would like stay rolling for as Here's long as possible. Here's your first sandwich. I'm gonna like, get you side plates. The whole vibe was like, get as much of this as you can. Like, yeah. Even when things were going so left, 
everyone yeah. was still that you're off. like this is the story now yeah you're like no this is actually yeah. way yeah more intense and even yeah, when we, we would accept what was happening we yeah. didn't like need something to go in a scripted yeah, but way there wasn't this like resp not and not responsibility is not the right Thank word you. but there wasn't this like I love this place. Act oh, of great. being like we're we're so good. Like we would never show something bad. It was it was like that is the point. That's like we're showing yeah. you the flaw. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. Can I ask you Earl Grey or green Earl Grey Persian or green tea? Ooh, Earl Grey Persian, please. Perfect. So what all is right. this? We, we don't have a teapot, so we're using this. This I, looks this great. Is all a mystery My teapot is He's lost like, right now. Restyling some it. little high That's like for a us. crab I salad. I don't eat anything right now. It's what a, is it? It's an egg and crab salad tea mm. sandwich. Mm. Thank you. Good? Thank you. Mm. Good, good, good. I'm so I'm happy. Glad. I'm so spoiled. Oh my God, <laughs> thank you so much. Mm. All right, this I'm going to make you some tea to go with it. This is insanely good. This is really good. Isn't this great? Yep. It's so cute and tiny. But even outside of ice, it's dope. You're, like, so how'd you get to LA? Tell us about this. Because huh. it's like, LA has been funny for us. Mm -mm. Oh my God. Don't get me started. I got tricked into moving here by my husband. Mm -hmm. Same. <laughs> exact same. Exact same. What is wrong with you people? And every day I'm like, <laughs> when are we going back to New York? I know. <laughs> Make him sad, but he knows. So basically, 2020, 2020, my mum died. Oh, sorry. Um, it's fine. She, we knew she was dying. She held on a long time. I got to hang out with her the last three months she died. Mm -hmm. um, in England, she died of cancer, not COVID. And she was like pretty strict old English lady. Mm -hmm. She's like, what are you going to do? You're not going to just go and live in New York for the rest of your life, Oof. you stupid girl. What are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to be 90 years old, running around New York in your stupid little outfits. You're like, that's the dream. And I was like, yeah. She was like, this man loves you. I'm talking about my then boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just get married and go and live with him in LA. Thank you. Because at this point, I lived in New York, or he had a place in New York as well, but he lived in LA. Okay. He wanted to be here. His dad lives here. He's basically French, but it's confusing. Um, and... I was like, okay, mom. I mean, my mom was terrifying. <laughs> and she was like, marry him. And I was like, no, because I didn't ever want to get married because I was, or everyone in my family has been divorced a hundred yeah. million times. And then she basically bullied him to propose to me. Oh my God. I, <laughs> your mom arranged your marriage. Oh yeah. She's like, listen, this is happening. Oh yeah. This she, is happening. Took, she took off her wedding ring, this wedding ring. And she was like, Have gave it, it to do him it. and was like, use this to propose to my daughter. Wow. Otherwise, I'm never going to die. You're going to be keeping me here alive and in pain forever, and it'll be all your fault. I'm not going to die until she's engaged. I mean, she's kind of had a sense of humor about it, but yeah. yeah. That is funny. Your funny. mom sounds so cool. She What's up with your mom? a real character. You, you would definitely do some shit like that in the future, babe. <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, I have the, a lot of the same energy. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was the whole thing. So he gets the ring out and he's like how about and i'm like where did you get that what is going on and i freaked out and i was like this is insane she's always tried to control me my heart my whole life my cousins were like don't do it don't marry him yeah. your mom's gonna ruin her relationship even on your relationship even on your deathbed i mean because my mom has a reputation for being how long had you been with him up till then not even a year oh, wow right. your mom is wiling out yeah <laughs> well she probably just like wanted to know that you were gonna be good good like I safe know. or just I don't even, I don't know what it is, but there's like something about parents. They have this thing where they're like, I need to know that you're going to be okay. Be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have somebody yeah. and you're like taking care of. And also, of. I'd worked at Vice for 12 years. I was broke. Yeah. <laughs> they don't pay. This man has a job. She was like, <laughs> cling on to him for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend. I'm going to be totally <laughs> real with you. Okay. <laughs> this dude is your social security. Yeah. Like, don't fuck this up. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, that happened. I said yes. We got married. And then I just, I don't know, man. 2020, you either like get married and you just yeah. change your life or yeah. you don't. And yeah. I just followed this yeah. man to LA uh -huh. and he put me in this big house. And I haven't lived in a house since I was a kid. I've been in yeah. apartments in New York and London. Yeah. And then I was very quickly like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? Uh -huh. um, He's the best. 
no shade to him, but this place is so weird. It's Stepford Wifey. It's so bizarre. It can here. be Stepford Wifey. Mm -hmm. I'm very much like in the gilded cage. Mm -hmm. That's oh. how I feel. I go to New York every... That's <laughs> truly how I feel. I fucking can't stand it here like, what sometimes. I'm like, what is going on? Like, And it's like, I won't leave the house for a couple of days. Mm. Because I don't want to. Because like, you have where to drive for 45 minutes. To get down a fucking hill mm. to go to a place that I hate with a bunch of people that I hate. Mm. And then when I don't leave the house, I'm like, what's going I can't live like this. But also, I cannot interact. Mm. It's truly, it's mindfuck. But do you, I struggle with the complaining, with the feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. no, because I have this beautiful life, right? We no, live 100%. in these incredible houses. Yeah. I'm like, I'm living somebody's dream. Yeah. Am I a spoiled brat like what what is no, wrong with for me? sure there is an element of guilt because i'm like it's so beautiful every day i really i like what can you complain about I know, it's like I really i just i go to new york about every six weeks uh -huh. just to feel something oh my god yeah really i go and i like sit sometimes i don't even tell my friends i'm coming into town i go there just so i can work because my brain doesn't work here yeah i wake up in the morning and i'm like who am i where am i yeah what what do i like we were just watching we were watching <laughs> something i don't know I, it might have been an episode of Curb, and somebody was like getting into a cab in New York, and then the some she was like, "Fuck you, that's my cab," and I was like, "I would do anything for that to happen to me today." Just someone be mean. I would to do me. anything to have like a horrible interaction <laughs> on the street in New York, or just be on the subway and someone like shoulder check me. I, I would be like, "Oh my god, right. please, like, miss this. anything." Yeah, it's a fine. it's a real thing. Like yeah. we talk about it, and I think at least on my side of the understanding, yeah, like I see it because. We joke too, I don't really have a job all the time. Like yeah. I work in between. So when I don't have a job, like the last year and a half, I haven't been on a shoot. It's like, I'm in here too. So yeah. both of us are kind of just like, uh, waiting for something to happen. Well, yeah. something's about to happen. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. She'll pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. also we understand it's not a us thing. It's a LA, LA thing. LA thing, right. Yeah. But it people is. who love LA, when when they when I meet them and they don't understand what I'm talking about, uh -huh. I'm like I don't really like it here, and they don't, and I see this blanket. I'm like, yeah. it makes me want to like run for the for, for the hills. Yeah, I'm like, why? I'm jealous. Like I want to love it. Why I'm, can't I just be a normal person? Same. I feel that way too. <laughs> like I really wish that I just could, and I'll have moments where I do. Like mm. there's like a couple days there'll be moments where I'm like, this is actually really nice. Like yeah. I need to shut the fuck up sometimes. Mm. But overall, I think it's just if you've ever lived in a place Fish like New York. Fish cake sandwich. Ooh. If this is All half right. as good as the other one, then we're in heaven. Um, but I think, yeah, like you lived in London. You lived in New York. You lived in these cities where it's not a driving culture. There's, It feels like L.A. is so diverse, but it doesn't feel diverse. Mm -hmm. It no. feels like... I've never felt more like a skinny white bitch than I have since I moved to this town. I'm just yeah. another white woman here. <laughs> in London and in New York, I had some sort of something going on. Yeah. Well, it feels like there's more pockets yeah. in other cities where you can kind of find yeah. your people in yes, those pockets. Exactly. In LA, it's where like... Where people? Yeah, I don't know. It's That's so the weird. number one struggle I talk to him about all the time. I'm like, I don't have friends here. No, it's weird. I'm like, and I don't know how to make friends. and I don't know where to go. Like, I do have a couple of friends here, but they feel the same as me. So we just bring yeah. each other down. Yeah. So it's just like the shit on LA yeah. fest all the time. Yeah. So I go to New York just to like feel like myself and yeah. see my friends and then come back and recover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like real, it's like a real thing. Like, I haven't left at all this year, just like very yeah. minimally because I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh, traveling. Like I just, whatever. And I'm like, I first things first. I'm like, I don't give a shit. We need to leave. Mm -hmm. We have this baby. This baby is going to be on a plane. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we're going. We're yes. going anywhere. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. I mean, I think if I was still traveling, I think that's the other adjustment. For the for about 10 years, I was on a plane going somewhere to shoot something, right? Same as you. Yeah. And I've now mm. been, I haven't, I, I haven't worked for Vice since December. Um, okay. But that's been such an adjustment. Like, I think also just being at home, not having a shoot to go on has just made me a bit crazy. It's like a big say, adjustment, right? That would be an adjustment anywhere. Thank you know, living and in for LA anyone. or... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been going... She knows I go crazy in here just like waiting for movies to go and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Exactly. It's yeah, it tough. gets to a point where you're like, okay, if you're used to a certain lifestyle, like not being in the same place all the time, you're going to go stir crazy. No, exactly. Um, anyway, so yeah, and even like in London, I used to love driving. Mm -hmm. Like you get in your car, it's raining, the music's great. Yeah. Like why would you be anywhere else? Yeah. And then driving here is psychotic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is. What is the driving Because the freeways aren't set up for this amount of people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I feel like taking a left turn in LA is risking your life every time. Every mm -hmm. time. Every time. It's like terrifying. And there's no like driving culture. The driving culture is inconsistency. Everybody's playing by different rules. Mm -hmm. Somebody's on their phone. Somebody's like blazed out of their mind. It's, it's interesting. It is. In LA it feels like or maybe just California in general, but LA feels like different neighborhoods or parts of the city or different states. Like if you live on the east side and you have friends that live in Santa Monica, like west side, Malibu, you might as well have to take a plane to see them. No. Like I'm never... No, I'm never going to do You it. never see them. Mm -mm. You're like, no one's driving. No one's... I never go to the beach. Do you go to the beach? No, I never go to the beach. The last time I was at the beach was maybe over a year ago. Also, if you go to the beach, are you going to want to get in that oh. terrifying cold water? Not necessarily. Amazing. No. I've been like eating these sandwiches over there, and I think this is pretty good. What is this? Like, this, this is, is a fish cake. So that is a fish cake sandwich. It's a yeah. pan fried fish this cake is wild. with a homemade, I made a sweet chili mayo mustard. I'm mm. so lucky right now. I love oh, LA right now. This is Sorry, LA's good right now. This is a good LA, right a good LA now, day. I will not talk shit about LA today. Come also, on. I moved you to a wax city. I take responsibility for that. We're supporting my career, you know? It's okay. I appreciate it. I think I need to have a baby. I think being pregnant here would make it make sense to me. It definitely makes me not want to move back to New York. And then I think, like, well, then where the fuck would I live? Like, am I going to live in Miami? Right. <laughs> you know? Um, I Are definitely you think... Miami? Mm. Orlando. I'm from Orlando. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I think having a baby in L.A. It does. And it just makes, like, your life a little smaller. Which, yeah. in a weird way, makes L.A. better. There's not as much pressure to like partake in shit that you're just yeah. not interested in but also maybe this extreme reaction i or we are having to this place is also an extreme reaction to like getting older yeah i mean not way older but like mm -hmm. no but that's be behaving like adults i mean too it's yeah. like you just got Saying married goodbye to yeah. same there is a piece of your identity that changes like yeah. there is a little bit and like that's the number one thing everyone talks to me about having a child too they're like you're gonna mourn the old self because you're making marriage, having kids, these are all like massive changes. And especially moving to a new city, it's yeah. like so much. Give yourself time, yeah. honestly, because I, I was really unhappy here. The same. No, I was really <laughs> unhappy when I moved here. Like I started to live in LA part-time like 2015. And all the way until 2021, I just did not accept that I lived here. And I'm 41, you know, and like, I got to play all through my 30s mm -hmm. and 20s and what are teens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so like, I don't know. I still complain and I still like really miss the energy of New York. But for what we're doing with work and then yeah. family baby, I know we could not have this much room in New York. You could no. be, yeah, yeah. No. Like I have so many friends in New York that just chose not to have kids this generation. Right. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't have a yard. I don't have a spare bedroom. And yeah. Like it seems so trivial. And I, I would love to see all my friends go on the journey mm -hmm. of like being a family. But it's really hard in New York right now. Do you think if all your people came here, it would make a difference? Or is the place just weird? I don't think it would make a difference. Yeah. Because every person that comes, yeah. you're so excited and you hang so tough yeah. for like three months. But then you're like, that was a lot of effort and work. It's so much effort That's to fucking hang. Socializing, is it's so much like you're making Nothing's plans organic. two weeks out. I'm not that type of person. I want to like hit me up to go to dinner at like 3 p.m. for that night. Yeah. 
you know, also, or five or seven. What is this whole, the whole walking thing? I didn't realize like in New York, you're always walking because mm -hmm. you, you got somewhere to be. Yeah. And it's like at the same time, it's fixing your brain. Yeah. And giving you exercise here. I have to like schedule a walk mm -hmm. on the walk. I have to like listen to something and I, I feel like a hamster in a wheel. I'm like, I'm on yeah. a walk. Am I yeah. 90? Yeah, like I'm and, taking myself. Yeah, no, I feel you for <laughs> sure. And because I would, even if you don't have anywhere to be in New York, you're walking. Yeah, you're not just like sitting at home. Yeah, rarely. And, yeah, yeah. And there's people. I don't know about you. I have horrible ADD, and so I've learned that I need the constant mm -hmm. stimulation mm -hmm. of a crazy city to calm my to quiet my brain. But in a place like this, which is so quiet, my brain gets loud. Mm -hmm. It's like. My, this is my theory on why LA is whack and weird. It is a city that is the most segregated by money mm -hmm. that I have ever lived in. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Tonkatsu sandwich. Mm -hmm. But it's like in New York, it didn't matter if my friend lived in Harlem or I lived downtown. We would all be crossing around all the time and you just run into each other. You're going to find time to hang. The train is basically free. You know, in LA, if you live it's all divided by money. So if you yeah. live in a neighborhood like Pasadena, Nichols Canyon, the Palisades, a lot of your friends that you genuinely love or whatever, they're in a mid city yeah. in a different neighborhood. Now it's 50 minutes. And then when they get to your neighborhood, it feels different. Mm -hmm. You go to their neighborhood, you're like excited to be like back in the streets or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But there is a really hard sociological money line and it's really hard for people to deal with. Like I have a lot of friends that have come to the crib and just be like, damn, that's a big crib. Same, and I feel like I have to apologize. I feel like uh -huh. I'm embarrassed. I don't feel like I got to apologize and I don't feel guilty. My thing is just, I feel like, are you okay? Yeah. You know, and not I to know. be like in, in, in the nicest way. I'm just like, yo, I don't want you to feel like I that. Know. I don't like, yeah. I feel for you. Yeah. I got empathy and I'm just like, New York, it was never that obvious. You didn't like go into people's cribs and everything. Everyone wants to be in your crib here. Because mm -hmm. even if you have a beautiful apartment in New York, you still have someone screaming outside your window. You yeah. still, like we're all The suffering. playing field is yeah. very leveled. Yeah. It's like, for sure. Oh. You can live in the nicest apartment in New York. It also feels like the motivation in New York is different. People aren't so motivated. They definitely are motivated by money, mm. but it's more like, I'm going to do this thing mm. and like I have something to prove mm. and this is my dream. And in LA, I think that that's there, mm. but I think it's definitely more motivated by I've achieved this lifestyle. Totally. And I have this house and I live in this neighborhood. I'm just like, fuck. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. And we're also not office people. Like yeah. the jobs here are very office jobs. Uh -huh. In New York, even if you have an office job, your friend will be on the block. Yo, come down. Ah, I'm downstairs. Like. You never felt like you were up in an office. A boardroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like a playground. London's the same way. Yeah. Paris is the mm -hmm. same way. You know, Mexico City, same way. LA, it's just, it's really, we're in a suburb, guys. And yeah. like, yeah. we haven't it done is. this. It's a massive like, suburb. I did it in Florida, but as a kid, it's fine. Because yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. just meet up at the same gas station and do drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. It's like, now are we just slowly becoming our parents? And it's because we're old. If we could do drugs, we'd be fine, guys. Okay. We'd be fine. I mean, I do. Honestly. I literally. This <laughs> coincides with you not doing drugs. <laughs> you know, I never did that many drugs, though, to be real. You know, um, you're really going to run for office? <laughs> yes, I'm like, I'm a clean girl. I've never Straight done up drugs. Straight lying. But in, <laughs> in New York, I, I quit smoking cigarettes. I was like, over it. I moved to LA and I started smoking again. So I was like, I need to do something bad. Same. I've never asked him any times a, another person would come to our house. I'm like, you have a pack of cigarettes? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you have a stick. Because I won't buy one myself. I just feel like I can't cross mm -hmm. that line with myself anymore. But I'll be in the corner with my girlfriends. I'm like, let's go. Dude, right. part of this was, I was like, you guys need to hang. You guys need to be fucking friends. And she she hated me. I think she hated me for it because I was Hi. like, yo, you gonna, like, yo, you guys you guys might could be friends. And you were just like, fine. It's so no, no, annoying. No, no, it's no, so no, annoying. No, 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 no. It's, it's like, not. you can't. My, it's, it's annoying. It's annoying. It's, it's annoying. I understand. There's annoying. maybe like 
there's maybe one other person that you've introduced <laughs> me to that I'm like, oh, I fuck with like this. Like, this is the level of desperation in LA, guys. <laughs> but it's but she does to it for me too. She will, sets me up. With he will dudes. try to like set me up on like a friend date because I'm just like, because I, I love have, you. I have a handful of like good friends here, mm. but it's definitely they've lived in LA. Yeah, like they that was like wherever they grew up or they grew up here, they came here immediately after. That mm. break for me, like. People here socialize different. Like the every, it's just different. It's just like funny. I'm it separates I'll be like, a yo, bit. Yo, yo, yo. This girl like living here. Y'all could be friends, and you're. I can't make friends. <laughs> like you think I can't make no, friends? No, I'm like, saying. I'm, I'm, I'm like, like my husband said it to me, and I'm like, like, like I don't got social skills now. <laughs> no, I'm more like you're right. Like I literally cannot make a friend here. Like I don't. I'm like, are we speaking the same language? Yeah, I'm like, like ooh, don't set me up with people. That's disgusting. All my friends will be like, oh my god, there's this girl. She's also British. You're gonna. And I'm like. Do not introduce yeah, me to like, any English that's people. Not gonna work. There's a whole reason I moved I here. I hate to admit this was a setup. I set it up. Well, listen, I, I love you. I think you're great. <laughs> I, love, I can't wait to smoke a cigarette with you. I'm like, give me like two months. So this is this incredible. Out. You guys I got love. like a full 10 minutes on the pod to just dump. It was oh, amazing. I was like, amazing. wow, this is good. But wait, we don't even yeah. need couples therapy. Oh you God, just got The one thing that will join people is their mutual hate Hatred. for something. So yeah. I'm like, I will wait, hate When are you due? Like right now. But what date? September 11th. So Ooh. American. Well, yeah. my birthday is actually, I don't want to say that my Wait. birthday because I don't like people to know. What's your star sign? Six. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? <laughs> what is... I don't want people to know because I hate my, I'm one of those weird people that hates to be celebrated. Okay. So I don't tell Wait, people. Wait, but just tell me what's your sign? Virgo. Oh, you're a Virgo. Oh, Our amazing. baby's going to be a Virgo. Well, so Tom yeah. Hardy, he's also British. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's the one British person I wouldn't mind my husband no. introducing me to. Yeah, know, same. Like, um, <laughs> I'm like, can you introduce me to a guy? Um, <laughs> oh my anyway. god! <laughs> I fucking kill you. <laughs> Like, do you know what he's get the Julius, get the knife. I just, I just totally <laughs> stole that joke from Chris Rock. Anyway, oh, an old Chris Rock joke. Um, but wait. But really, hook her up with some new dudes. <laughs> the whole Virgo thing. So I love Virgo. In England, I didn't really follow horoscopes at all. I was actually, okay. I was like a skeptic. I was like, come on, no, it's yeah. not real. And like, I remember my mom would ask me to read her the horoscope from the. Sunday newspaper or whatever yeah. and I would always read her the wrong one to like <laughs> fuck with her and she's yeah. like oh it's so true and I was like you're a Scorpio I just read you're Gemini so good luck um and then I love and that. then also because I read the character description of a Virgo and I was like oh they suck they're so boring they do everything by the book they're very sensible I was like I hate that I, I could Virgos, see you as a Virgo Virgos though. get a bad rap I though a right but, like, and I was the like the description I... of a Virgo isn't very telling exactly. who a Virgo is right and I was like I don't like this this is wrong and not real mm -hmm. and then I moved to LA and everyone was like going to work on me and I finally yeah. I'm not saying I fully believe but I I'm I'm at a stage where I'm happy to suspend Disbelief. disbelief to enjoy it <laughs> yeah yeah so i apparently virgos are not as boring as they no. sound so yeah. i don't know well virgos and pisces are opposite signs my husband is a pisces we're, so pisces. we're pisces yo all right Yo, see, I did good. Matchmaking. So Virgos and Pisces, yeah. like, whatever the other, we're very I'm Pitching a new similar. show to Bravo, Oriental Matchmaker. Yeah. Oriental Matchmaker. <laughs> that is Wait, the title. That's genius. Yeah. But yeah, they say that. you have, we hold a lot of the same traits, and, like, Pisces are, like, the free, like, dreamers, like, more, like, bound to do some drugs. But I find a lot of Virgos have that same energy. Yeah, and then just Pisces, from the opposite direction. yeah, and we sometimes like we're not so put together and like regimented. Oh my god, my we, husband we don't is have so like regimented. we don't have like a great schedule system. But then we really do. Like when we yeah. people will meet us and be like, these people are insane. But I'm like, together. our daily life is very like carved out. Mm -hmm. We're actually I don't so think anyone would expect, type A. I wake up at yeah. six thirty. I take care of the dogs. I mm -hmm. make us both coffee. If she wants breakfast, she gets breakfast. First calls at eight thirty. You know, yeah. it's like I got two hours of family work, and then yeah. work, you have work. your shit together, and it yeah. feels good. Mm -hmm. But and, I think if you ask people, like, what if we weren't around? Like, do they have their shit together? They'd be like, no. No. Like, <laughs> my parents definitely don't think I got They'd my be like, shit no. together. Mm -hmm. My mom would be like, no. <laughs> like I, this bitch does not know what she's doing. To me, Virgos and Pisces arrive at the same party, and they both want to rage, 
Pisces because they're just like, I'm unleashing emotion. Mm -hmm. And Virgos because I've thought about this and I should do this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like from the Virgos I know. They're like, no, we're doing this. Yeah. We, we need to do this. We should do this. Yeah. But they arrive at the same party. Is my experience in my friendship with mm -hmm. Virgos. Interesting. You see, I still haven't worked out where I fit into the Virgo thing, but yeah, it's okay. We have to do the whole chart, though. Beyonce is a Virgo. Beyonce is a Virgo. Who else? There's so many. Michael Jackson, legendary I mean, Virgo, um, genius. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is a Murray. Virgo. Bill Murray. Murray. Yeah. See, he would end up at a wild party with like some Pisces, yeah. but through like wittiness you know like mm -hmm. through sardonic humor sardonic thoughts you yeah have there you know but like... see these are all like incredibly talented people and like artistic and creative we're excited yeah virgo do you know if you're having boy or girl boy yeah oh, virgo boy Congrats. thank Things you so cool we're yeah excited. he's due like any minute oh my god i'm just like i if it, i was like but hoping you're tiny i mean i can't to go into labor what you look like there, there's a look, lot under here you just look like you maybe ha have like too many sandwiches, but like not a whole baby. There's, I, <laughs> he's big. They're like, he's really? like eight pounds already. Honestly, I, I feel like, like the therapist would tell me not to be like, just have a baby. But honestly, like, like ours was accident. Yeah. Did not plan this. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, yo, it was, it's been amazing. Like, no, I'm going to yeah. do it it's, next yeah, year. Just yeah. Just get pregnant. You just know? have like, a baby. LA's it's cool fun. if you get pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good doctors. Yeah. You know, great yeah. grocery stores, lazy yeah. acres. Trader Joe's. Great yeah, doctors. She got a grocery life. store everywhere. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> you bet. I'm like, you know, that's the shit that would really will change your life in LA, though. Look, look, how are you going to be a mom yeah. in New York? There's not even a Dina DeLuca know. anymore. You oh, know what I mean? <laughs> like the Milfi grocery store is all closed in New York. I always how did just have like such a Milfi dream for myself in New York, though. You did. Yeah, yeah just like is. pushing a carriage in New York is so like we can, pushing we can a carriage do it. in LA. It just it. seems like, like a little little mum. It's a little uh, for me yeah. in New York. I'm the like sequel, Nichols Canyon gorgeous. Baby One, and yeah. then Nichols Canyon Baby Two. We we go to New York. You know? Yeah, we, we go it. to we go to we New do. York. I have the Dubber stroller yeah. on Park yeah. Ave. As long as I break bread, we could do this. You know, this is yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a place in New York. Yeah, that would be if we had a place in New York, and I could just do where you're like every six weeks yeah or whatever it is we just a week out of every three months i would be fine suddenly coming back you're coming back to la you get excited you're not coming like just yeah i feel like people watching are going to hate us this episode and it's okay yeah live in la for six months in a row well the thing is for you know, me yeah. it's like every really honestly every... try it it yeah. will break you this shit will break you i mean it's funny yeah especially i don't know man. I, I need to feel I need, I'm not, I'm also not American, so I need to feel connected to like, not necessarily the rest of the world, but just different cultures and different mm -hmm. vibes. And it's so sort of mono here. Yeah. If you don't have like yeah. a work thing bringing you together here, yeah. you're very, very separated. There's also shame involved. There's embarrassment involved. And the problem is the only industry here is entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know, that's the It's just entertainment. Problem. And like, we're from cities where it's like, my friends were not in entertainment. You know? Yeah. Rafael I, Martinez is out there stopping Vivek from entertaining people with yeah. his rendition of Lose Yourself. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's the thing though I will say about LA. The it it does like there's so much food that feels like the most diverse part yeah. of my day. Is like going mm -hmm. to eat yeah. Thai food or Korean food or going to S G V or going here and there, like getting Mexican food. I'm yeah. like, that's where that's you get the most food and diversity. grocery store is literally the right. things they got going here. That's what you get excited about in LA. It's true. I'm like trying new food, going to a new grocery I store. I know. Um, well, my husband's French, so he kind of has a fairly conservative palate. Let's okay. just say. Really. So I I have to go to New York to get my kicks if I want to oh. eat anything from another continent no way wow your mom really chose <laughs> no, i'm she kidding really I'm nice. like, I'm the man kidding. with the bland i love it though because he's a pisces so it's fine I'm yeah like, he's gonna work out all is forgiven he's, we he's love him great. he's hilarious yeah. i haven't yeah. made him sound it but he is <laughs> as long as he makes like me he's laugh, the joke you he told us on email like sounded pretty fucking food. funny <laughs> as long as he makes me laugh once a day for the rest of our lives we'll, yeah. we'll be okay yeah i think that's rare i can do that Babe, I can do that. For sure. I can do that. You, yeah, you make Regular. me laugh all the time. 
I could make you a tea sandwich. Oh, I thought I today's like, meal, you inspired so a great meal today. Why? Because I'm English, so you thought a cucumber sandwich. So we were like, all right, oh. the two things we're either going to do is either we're going to do something English for Charlotte or we're going to do something fashion for Charlotte. Yeah. And fashion would have just been the the Molly lettuce cups. I was going to give you a I, said, I had a, a photo. Cigarette. Perfect. Yeah. So what did I say? I, that, the day, I sent yeah, her a yeah, bag yeah. of Molly in a bowl of arugula and was like, this is what we're eating on the show tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and I'll I was like, next time, because this. I can't partake this time. So Yeah. But, next, but then I was like, time, all right, besides that, if we're not going to do... A bed of arugula, cigarette yeah. with a Diet Coke. I was like, if we're not going to do chopped Adderall lettuce cups, then we'll do some high tea sandwiches yeah. with the water pitcher. No, but this was <laughs> so good. But when both of our next projects come out, I mean, we have yeah, various, but particular ones yeah. that I can't really talk about very much right now, and I'm sure okay. you can't either. There's going to be crazy new tea that we'll probably need to take Molly to be able to. Speak. I think so. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I agree. I think, I think, so we will I need think to there's some that crazy tea. tea that will be spilled. <laughs> yeah, for definitely. Sure. Really? But this was yeah. amazing. I feel oh this God. was incredible. I know, this was so fun. I love this. So I feel like I just talked shit for an hour. It was amazing. We did, but it was nice. We so needed it was like this. a release. But we're not like mean people. We just No. Aww. No, not at all. It's not honestly, liking LA we're being makes honest. You a good person. Here's yeah. the thing I would tell. Like I'm sure person. there are gonna be people watching, like, yo, they have a great life there. Like, I would love to live in LA. I may live in a bumfuck other city that's yeah. ten times worse. The thing is, is I, I will tell people wherever you are it's like grass is greener on the other side yeah for that's sure. all it is and also man. who listen who's your audience uh i don't really know it's like a lot of men i, I guess. think it's like heavily yes it's predominantly like they men. funny i would say the audience is funny the yeah. comments we like the comments right. yeah the comments are good yeah but really no i i just but maybe it's interesting because i think it's interesting because i was sold this idea of a, a california yeah. when i was living in England like as I was a kid I was like I I survived my boring English childhood by yeah. dreaming of moving to America yeah. Yeah. California where it never rains and da, da, da. And then you get here and you're like oh like that's psychotic it's like, like very it's different so dark yeah yeah you know the audience may even like seeing some people that have some shit in a nice house be like yo don't give up your neighborhood exactly. don't give up yeah. your community because yeah. community and friends and oh, family everything. All, that's everything yeah I lived in the shittiest places in New York and I never complained. I had the yeah. best time in that city. Yeah, now I got the best house I've ever lived in and I'm like, fuck. I know. I would move back to fucking Adelphi Street. Yeah. yeah. You know? Wait, you know what's funny? So y'all in... are having a better life than us. For it's sure. true. I was in New York last week. <laughs> Don't pay attention to Instagram. And <laughs> I lived in Dime Square before it was even oh, Dime wow. Square. Oh my God. An OG, right. Orchard and Canal. You mean Orchard OG and Canal? Dime Square. <laughs> when it was not chill. When it was... Yeah. There was not Nobody shit happening. Nobody was there. It was disgusting. I lived 20 Orchard on the first floor. I was a first floor apartment on 20 Orchard. Well, there you go. Yeah. Wow. And I lived on like, what is now Kiki's, that Greek restaurant. Yeah. I lived Stop. on the top floor. Oh. And where, so I had a flat roof yeah, that I would yes. smoke cigarettes on. And last week, my husband and I met in New York. He just came out from Europe. And he was like, let's stay at that hotel nine orchard let's check it out and i was like this is gonna be weird and i had a view of my like roof wow that was crazy that is really and I was weird like, how the turntables what is going on yeah like, this that's really wild. jumped the shark in such a major way and that <sighs> hotel is so crazy like expe like bougie. i was gonna say yeah it's like it, we were gonna stay there we like looked yeah. at it one time we didn't end up staying there um, but I was like, Bad value. Dime square i was like this is insane yeah. you're paying out of your it's ass. embarrassing yeah it's also so funny. I see so many. So that's why, like, we complain, but then when we really think about it, we're like, yo, you really want, you know? Like... That's the thing. I would like to spend time there. Mm -hmm. I think it's just for me that's feeling it. like LA is my. It's my friends. Yeah. I feel like it, when LA is your only place you're spending time in, yeah. like, every 15 days, I start spiraling. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? But I think if you break it up, yeah. it's not so bad. Yeah. It does help. Yeah. It does. For sure. Yeah. That was it. Pork. Yeah. Yes. Oh, are you kosher? No. 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 Okay. I was, like, it, I was about to say it was so good. Yeah. Word. That was I'm crazy. It was it. so tender and moist. And... I hit it with the cleaver a bunch. That no, was I the heard thing you over I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting it with the cleaver. Yeah. I, um, this was fun though because yeah. I didn't like do the recipe because you, once you got here it was just fun. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's no, good because no, like good. I think it's actually more fun to not be like step by step and I just get to cook and talk and shit. 
Yeah. We have a new format now. Thing. We're gatekeeping this is the a recipes new format? now. Yeah. It's a, it's like those quiet YouTube cooking videos like where you ASMR. just see it, but they're not like, do this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. You can ASMR it a little bit. But do you remember when I did those munchies things? Did you ever see those? I didn't see the munchies ones. They, like, <clears throat> I was having like a weird moment where I didn't want to do news and they didn't know what to do with me and they just launched munchies and they were like, <clears throat> I had this reputation advice for like being a human dumpster. Like I would eat anything. They were like, yeah, was so skinny, <laughs> but people would shoot with me around the world and they'd be like, do you want to try the monkey brains? And I'd be like, give me two portions. And wow. everyone would be like, this chick is insane. Yeah. And so I just would eat anything. And so they were like, let's give her a show and just make her eat fucked up shit and like, it'll be funny. Oh, I love that. And so I did that for like, they sent me around Scotland to eat like. I remember, did, did you eat haggis? Eat haggis. Yes, yeah. I remember this now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I know, I, I don't cook really. I mean, I would like to more. I don't, I'm not like a foodie, but I love food, obviously. And I'm like, someone paid me to just eat for two years and it was amazing. Yeah. I should have done that more. Then I could be hosting the British Bake Off. But you could, you still do it now. Yeah. You know, you, just, you had an appearance on a food pod yeah. just now, you know, you're, like oh, add yeah, it to the IMDb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was exactly. filmed with its own katsu sandwich. I was yes. eating. <laughs> Hire me. I mean, yo, I watch the Food Network sometimes. Yeah. I don't think those people know what the hell they're doing with food. You well, know? they're just not interesting to watch. Yeah. Or well, they're not like enthusiasts. Yeah. 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 Besides Ina Garden. Yeah, That's my girl. Garden. Get pregnant, there. start a podcast with your man. LA yeah. would be better. Get, get pregnant, start a food show. <laughs> right? Just yeah. Just eat. Be like, these are my yeah. cravings. Because it is kind of crazy. It's like a journey you'll go Could on. Could I make something out of the fact that I don't really cook? And I yeah. have a husband that doesn't want to eat anything. If That's even pretty if I good. Could. Yeah. That's pretty good. Well, That's like when they great. sent Eugene Levy and the they have an Apple yeah. show where Eugene Levy goes traveling, but he's too neurotic and anxious to it. travel. He hate, he's like, I hate traveling. Yeah. And then he's there and they're like, we're going to do this amazing. Oh, like, good. Yeah. yeah. yeah and good. he's like, I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's and I'm just, he's like, I just I would like, like to just... invest in show. He I'm... literally says like multiple times, I just like want to go to like a cafe in my hometown. It's like a show like, making huh? Larry David leave the Palisades and he's just like, yeah. get me back. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Fine. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> if I make a new TV show and someone describes it as fine, I will kill myself. <laughs> I think that they were aiming for fine. Though. I think I've lost so many friends because I don't even realize that I'm just telling them what I really think, but it's fine. I'm like, oh, fuck. You watch too much Curb now. No, yeah. I mean, I'm the everything's trash. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, not everything. Yeah. Some things are great. I mean, I've just leaned in. I lean into the trash. Like, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is like... That's been yeah. everything. Oh, everything to me. I know, love. Yeah. What have I been... Wa I watched some of those really gnarly, like, dating reality shows. Like a Love Island. Yeah, Love, like a... love is Blind. Yeah. It's so depressing. It's, it makes me feel better about myself. I got so bored on rewatching The Wire. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. For the right. third time, I'm rewatching yeah. The Wire. I You're ran out deep. of things to watch. You're deep, deep in into it. season three, rewatching The You're Wire. Loyal. They need yeah. to do something as good. I know. It's just, it's just like they just can't. I like rewatching The Wire, The Sopranos at least every other year because mm -hmm. it just puts me in a like, oh, I'm comfortable. I like this. I know. Like, yeah. I like you guys. Avon's back out of jail. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, wonderful. It reminds you who you are as well. Those really? Everything that... is right in the world. We will figure it out, guys. We'll figure it out, LA. We will, we will. not kill ourselves. Yeah, next time we're so here you, on the pod. Everybody you... promise no suicide. Yeah. Promise? Promise. 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 Not, yet. Not, yes, not yet. Yes, not yet. If you guys do, just let me know. Like, I'd like to schedule. I'll send the G-Cal. Oh, you'll schedule I with do, us? I, even if I tried, I'd like to fuck it up. And... <laughs> I say, you, need, you need other people there. Yeah, you need I need us. a producer. It's a group thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll direct it. She'll produce it. Yeah. It'll be phenomenal, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it funny. Life of David we'll be yeah, 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 there'll be food involved. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Everyone gets to pick their last we meal. It's just to a studio. So it's like Charlotte's Suicide, Life of David Gale, but like <laughs> she's Kevin Spacey, and it's like more darkly humorous with food. That's like a pitch for a film. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm Kevin Spacey. Yeah. I like. We're yeah. going to make a whimsical statement against a death penalty as an excuse to make this, but really, Charlotte yeah. as Kevin Spacey. And then Spacey someone's going to pull you into a boardroom and be like, no politics. Yeah. Well, it'll do gangbusters you're, and go crazy here, and then they'll be like, much. wait, you guys killed him. You, it yeah. was a suicide <laughs> film. Like, <laughs> Make yeah. it more lighthearted, please. Yeah. Don't have a political message yeah. in this suicide film. Wait, yeah. I love this. Yeah, oh, this yeah, is good. Rose Wiley. This is my favorite yeah. colors as well. Yeah. It's a little pink area, you know? Where pink meets, where purple meets blue on the spectrum. Yeah. 
So what are you doing the rest of the day? I I got to do a call in 23 minutes. Also, and then I'm gonna... guys, I have an announcement. The guy is coming to fix the oh, cabinet. We're going to get a new cabinet. Tomorrow. Oh, no, but then we won't be able to see your lovely plates anymore. Well, that one's just broken. Oh. Okay. Like the glass on it shattered. Oh, okay. So he took it down and it hasn't been replaced well, because huge. he got very busy. This was not he our fault. Busy. He got big busy. We're happy for him. We love that for My him. My house. But we're getting a cabinet back today. That's great. We still have the cabinets from 1949, and they're like sticky. Oh I mean, 49. Like, that's the year of the Cultural like, Revolution. That's crazy. Like the drawers are like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 You got the Wait, little I red. Love you that. got the little red book drawers. Yeah. I love like the Nothing's old changed. LA yeah. houses that still have mm. and like we the pink a... bathrooms. Oh yeah, so I have like, a pink oh, bathroom. I love that. And I have a, I have a bar, an old bar, like a built-in like Invite a us to bar. Drink. Yeah, yeah. Please, coming. Yeah. Please. Now? Let's drink Manhattans. Yeah. Yes. Let's go. Let's yeah. go drink. Can Manhattans. you make some? Though? Yeah, I can make yeah, Manhattan. Can I make a good Manhattan. He can make anything. He just has. That's why she's not gonna get rid of me. I, I, she laughs. You laugh. Yeah, Admit it. I, I laugh, laugh and Tell I do have like laugh. I have like room service. <laughs> I'll just be like, oh, I'm like feeling this. I I really want like spaghetti and meatballs and like so lemonade. It's like Lee like, Daniels, the, the butler meets Ali Wong. Backyard. That's what she's getting. Yeah. Did you, you know? cook? No. Oh my god. I like. No, I can. Either. I'll bake. My contribute. I, she bakes. Bake. She. You know what? She. You be. She bakes a lot. I gotta yeah. give her. She made. She made me a pumpkin bread, and this like new graham cracker blueberry cake thing. Mm -hmm. I came home from yeah. work, my first day of work in a while, and she was like, I made you stuff. Aww. Well, I just feel that he, like, cooks everything, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm like, I need to do something. She's also yeah. psychologically signaling, the more you leave the house, the more things I'm going to do for you. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I'm like, job is he's, good. He's job on to you. Good. He's on get to you. Get out know what of I mean? the house. I'm like, oh, job. man. I need to get better at cooking. Production. Though. It's not great. I'm fine. I can follow a recipe, but I find it stressful. To. If, if you're, you're not curious and into cooking, is, don't yeah. I'm curious, don't but I really believe that there's a there's a brain type, there and is. for me, it's hard. Yeah. It's stressful. Cooking is like the timing, like, and I fuck it up. Yeah. My brain won't hold multiple things at once, and I forget, and then something burns. It's like it's a disaster. No, he's like doing like he's like being like an artist when he's cooking, and but I'm like also oh. like talking to camera and yeah. talking to us, and like because when you cook, your brain works different. Like he'll yeah. look at our fridge, and I will see just a bunch of like old things that don't I would never know what to make and be like oh I can make this dish out of this this and that and that and this and I'm like what I'm will hunting in front of a fridge uh -huh. yeah I'm kidding. Uh, like my brain <laughs> I just see like lettuce and a tomato and I'm like a sa uh, bread sandwich yeah he's like I've made a stew <laughs> I'm like, it just doesn't work I'm like, like that toast? for me yeah I'm like I have one dish and it really is toast I'm really good at toast that's a good dish. Yeah, you could it put anything. Matter. Open face, yeah. You could put anything on toast. Avocado. Mm -hmm. You could do like prosciutto and brie with like a I have that jam. type of fixation me, thing I like where it. I have the same thing every day for like a month and then I can never eat it again. I'm I like that. that. I will eat a dish for seven days. Yeah. Partially because I'm cheap, but really because I'm addicted. Mm -hmm. That's an ADHD thing. I do that too. Yeah. The only the only time I haven't been able to do that is pregnancy because my palate changes like you hourly. still be you eating the same yogurt every day she's eaten the same yogurt yeah. every day for like seven months the entire pregnancy that's your every thing. morning fage with the honey on the i like side. look forward to it <laughs> and i didn't even like i like didn't like yogurt before being pregnant yeah we did that. i like i hated it like he would always eat yogurt and i was like disgusting and i got pregnant and i was like i need well, charlotte's yogurt. gonna be pregnant in three months eating fage yogurt with honey on the side I'm telling you it's the best <laughs> breakfast and pregnancy oh my it, like it's sets over. you off nice and you're like oh now i can like enjoy my day i've done like one healthy thing for my body i've like oh, given the baby you. something i'm like no. <laughs> and i'm like this is the corniest shit guy i said it to her yesterday i i take care of, i like the plants right yeah. uh -huh. and i've been so stressed out for like i'd say 10 months uh -huh. i haven't really paid attention to like what the plants are doing and yesterday i finally sat in front of this grapefruit tree and i was like wait you like doubled in size this year and I didn't even really notice. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, I really do think all of us are fucking trees. Where it's like, we probably don't get to the size we want to be in the moment we want to be that size. But eventually, you are the tree you're supposed to be. Well, yeah. It's like, we're going to end up where we're supposed to be. Wait, yeah. this is amazing. It yeah. was a stupid tree. I looked at the Aww, stupid tree. Cute, no, I love it. Yeah. yeah. It's cute. Yeah, we'll be where we're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. It may be here, it you're may right. not be here. You're exactly. Right. And if I think about how I felt a year ago with all the vice shit i mean there's so much shit i will tell yeah, you we'll, t we'll talk as soon as the camera's you know mm -hmm. down but yeah. yeah 
things are fine. Things are great. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Cut. <laughs>